group, Danny Kruger and Miriam Cates. Uh, and our token lefty, Michael Crick, is still here. Um, <laughs> but I'll come to you later, uh, Michael. Um, Miriam, can I start with this? Because actually this is a new group. Immigration is one of the things you're talking mm -hmm. about. But you're really trying to show that the Tories still have some ideas, even after 13 years in government. Yes, so we're a group of MPs who've been elected since 2016 and, and in that time I think people have voted four times for a mandate to reduce migration and it was one of our key pledges. So clearly we have an interest as politicians as well as in terms of serving our electorate in bringing that figure down. Now the Prime Minister has made some great, a great start in illegal migration and some adjustment to the student scheme which will bring numbers down somewhat but we're just proposing some additional ideas to really bring those numbers further down to what we promised. OK, well, Danny, we've heard this again and again and again, mm. and the numbers go up and up and up. Mm. Why does a new group actually make any difference? Isn't it same old Tories, same old message, and we fail to deliver? Well, there's certainly not going to... I mean, it's not enough for us to say that we need to bring the numbers down. It's not enough for any of us as MPs to make these pledges. We need to actually see it happen, and we are on a manifesto commitment to do so. All three of us were elected with that commitment. Anybody can see that there have been events since 2019 that weren't anticipated, increase in refugee numbers, particularly from Ukraine and Hong Kong, and that's understandable. Those numbers will fall naturally. But since 2019, I'm afraid to say, because of our new points-based immigration system, which we should be very proud of having the freedom to do since Brexit, the fact is that system is too lenient, and there are too many people who are able to come here, not just for work, of course, it's families as well. People can bring their families in with them. So migration has risen far too high since the early Blair years, of course, when he opened up the borders to the EU. But since we've left the EU, we've now seen numbers rise from the rest of the world and we have to bring them down. But how do we get over the various blockages? So the Treasury is constantly saying that this is the only way to get economic growth and that's very powerful within Conservative circles, let alone officialdom. Uh, the courts are making it almost impossible to stop uh, illegal migration, and the House of Lords won't pass tough migration bills. So we can say these things. How do we actually do them? Well, I mean, that's a good question, but I think we do have the freedom, as Danny said, to adjust this points-based system. That doesn't need le new legislation. We can just change the guidance. And I think when we brought in this initial salary cap of 26,000, I mean, perhaps the government didn't think it would lead to the kind of migration levels that it has done. But we have seen those levels rise, and it's right to increase the salary threshold to the point at which people become net contributors to our economy. So I think that's a really important start. But there are things we can do without legislation. The well, trouble is that, from your, with what you're saying, is that the British economy is hugely dependent on more migration. That's why the figures have gone up to 606,000. The illegal immigration is only a small part of it. The health service is dependent on, uh, 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 on migration. And uh, the, the universities uh, are, are, have become hugely dependent on foreign students. The, if, if you were and I don't believe it would ever happen in a million years, but if you were uh, before the next election or even you know, shortly afterwards to get it down to Damien Green and David Cameron's promise of tens of thousands, the economic effect would be devastating. Well, well, I think you've used exactly the right word, dependent. We are dependent on this mass level of cheap labour from abroad and until we end that dependency, we're not going to see any improvement. But you're not going to do that overnight, are you? No, that, we're not, that we're is not a, going to do that overnight. But we have to do it. We have to take this extremely important step of saying that progressively but quickly we will stop the inflow of cheap labour because you're right the economy that we have at the moment is totally dependent on this source of labour but we need to change the economy so that people are properly investing businesses are investing in technology in training of skills we ourselves as a country are training our own young people rather than sending them off to universities to do degrees that aren't going to help them get a job that will sustain them in life we need to be supporting our own businesses and our own young people. So we have to change the economic model. And that will only happen if we make this really important step of saying we're going to reduce the flow of inward migration. And that will induce the changes that are needed. But it can't happen quick immediately, but it's got to start now. But I think a lot of employers would be terror who can't, you know, we, we only have to see all around us when we go to restaurants and hotel, how of, hotels, how often people are short of, 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 of staff. Mm. And, and it, a lot of employers will be terrified by what you're saying. That okay. they would agree with the, the idea in the long term, yes, but if, if, if it's going to be done in the short term, in time for the next election, then the economic effects will be huge. But actually, that's the point, yeah. that 
um, the dependency has to be broken. And actually, we don't want to be a nation of fruit pickers on very low wages. That's not the future for the UK economy. We want productivity gains. We want businesses to be investing in automation, which they're not doing as long as they get effectively the drug of endless cheap immigration. Exactly. And going back to your earlier point about the economy, the problem is that the way that the Treasury and the OBR measure growth is just... GDP, overall GDP. So, of course, the more people you bring in, the bigger your economy looks. But mass migration has not improved our GDP per capita. It hasn't made us better off as a country. And until we end this addiction to, to low-wage, low-skill migration, we're not going to see those productivity gains. And, yes, we have a tight labour market, but we also have 5 million people who are economically inactive. We've got 700,000 people on long-term sickness benefits who want to work. There will never be any incentive to bring those people back into the job market until we end the supply of cheap labour. But... Uh, the only way you're going to get a lot of those people back into the job market is by paying them more. Uh, and that, of course, but is that's inflationary. A good thing. Well, it, it may we, be we good need, in the long term. We need but, to be but, paying people but more. Also, but it, 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 it contributes more to inflation, well, particularly if they're in the private sector. Uh, than if they're in the public of, sector. Yes and yes. no, because it gets them off benefit dependency yes. and therefore allows us ultimately to reduce taxes, which is um, not inflationary because it lowers the state of a size percentage of the economy. Exactly. And um, until we make those changes, we won't bring those people back. And really, we need to get back to the situation where the market is setting the right wages to attract the right people with the right skills and retain those people, like we saw with the HGV crisis during, during COVID. And the New Conservatives, this is the start of lots of policy ideas you're going to be bringing forward. Are you going to give me the exclusive on what your next policy idea is going to be? Uh, we can give you that exclusive, Jacob. We're going to be working on skills. So this is a really important question. What are we going to do if we're cutting ourselves off from cheap imported labour? Well, we need to be recruiting in the British workforce. We need to invest in people's skills and training. So we're going to be looking at the higher education system and the further education system, adult education. So that's our next uh, project. But yes, over the next few months, we want to be working with colleagues to develop a range of policy projects. We'd love to hear from your viewers, Jacob, and people in the country. So visit our website, sign up to hear from us. We'd like to develop a range of plans. Not, nothing it's against current government policy. We're being accused of sort of being rebellious. What we're doing is supporting the government's mission, it, very much in support of what the government's but, doing, particularly around migration and the economy, developing ideas for the next manifesto. But I mean, well, again, you. skills.